guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and I've got the man, the myth, the legend. It's Lucy, Lucas X Gamer, excuse me, the Brazilian pro back on the channel today. We're going to provide a ton of top ladder content against some of the best players in the world. Starting out against Benzer Ryder from Chaos Theory in CRL Asia here at 7,100 or beyond trophies. I didn't catch exactly where he was at the beginning of this video, but yeah, I'm just going to keep the uh, keep the camera rolling, so to speak, and just see what type of matchups we can get. Try to provide strategy and templates and, br and blueprints for you guys when you take basically the quintessential free-to-play deck in the game into the arena for yourselves. There's really no better player to learn from than Lucas gamer i think that he made a lot of you guys believers in his last video just pulling off some absolutely insane sick plays here on the channel so i'm so thrilled to have him back on the channel again and here he goes in with a hog push there gonna bypass that minion horde and get one swing on that right tower uh benzer one of the best players actually in crl asia i do believe he has the highest king of the hill win rate out of every player in the entire league so uh, definitely going to be a tough matchup here. He's playing Minor Mortar, which is the other really staple of free-to-play players. Granted, both uh, decks do have one legendary card, uh, Minor and the Log. If your Log isn't leveled up, you can try Barbarian Barrel, or I would actually prefer Zap. Uh, or maybe even uh, Giant Snowball in this deck, but hopefully you have at least the card uh, unlocked. But Log is one of those frustrating cards, right, when it's a little bit under-leveled because you can't take out a princess that's, that's one level higher. And that is so annoying. I remember that before my Log was maxed out. I remember that being, like, so irritating. Like, that's one of those interactions where you're like, okay, pay to win game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when you can't take out a princess with a Log. Anyway, I digress. Going into the match here, we're about to enter into double elixir time. And so far, Benzer actually has the elixir, or excuse me, the damage advantage over Lucas. So he sets up with a cannon. He logs back that girl rascal. And then look at that beautiful reset on the miner. Cycles back to an ice golem to go ahead and keep that miner off of his tower, preventing any more chip damage, it looks like here. Even the miner gets kited down the lane a little bit, but he does get one more shovel hit on that left tower. Now we have the very close setup on that cannon there. And notice the placement here, guys. It's just beautiful placement. That way he was able to avoid the fireball with the musketeer there. Nice spacing here using the entire side of the arena at his disposal. He trades a fireball off on the motor as well. And look at that prediction there with that cannon. Predicted the miner with the cannon. You're going to see that. That's one thing that you'll pick up out of uh, Lucas's game, guys, is he is not afraid to go unorthodox with his cannon placements. You saw him place one right next to the tower, again, allowing more spacing for his musketeer and allowing, obviously, a distraction uh, with the mortar, but not playing it so high where they could play the defensive mortar to target onto the cannon. Here we go again. It's going to be a nice ice goal, and we catch that miner again with the... Uh, and we activate! Oh, my God. Did you guys see that? That was a sick play there, guys. He actually caught the miner with the cannon and then pushed the miner with the log into the king tower. Now that is a great king tower activation. So now we have the cannon here facing directly on the bridge into that mortar. It's going to buy him a little bit of time to distract. Now he has the ice golem back in cycle, but uh oh, this could be trouble. We do have a miner on that tower. Hog Rider, meanwhile, is going to get one swing, but the minion horde does a good job of styming Lucas's push here. About uh, 35, 40 seconds here into sudden death overtime. Oh man. Man, we can't start out with a loss. No. All right, so here we go. I have faith, though. Lucas Lucas is just such a beast, but we'll see. It's going to be difficult. Now, a big important factor with this deck is the magic number. We talked about this uh, on, I believe, the Ice Bow video, but it's just as important with 2.6 Hog Cycle. Knowing what your fastest five card direct spell damage is combined onto a tower. What I mean by that is, in this case... Fireball plus Fireball plus Log. If you're going to play this deck, you need to know that number. Do yourself the favor, right? The King Tower activate helping out against that Miner. We'll talk more about that in the next matchup, but I want to focus on the end of this gameplay first. So here we go. Ooh, I thought we were going to get a Hog connection on the right tower. We do get an Ice Golem connection, taking the tower down to 1451. Meanwhile, that defense and more able to pull that Hog back up in the lane. We block that Goblin gang there, and we send in another Hog. Hog is at the ready. A Fireball down against those Goblins. We do get the hog to no, we don't get the hog to another to another hit on that tower So now we only have 75 seconds left remaining in this match guys. Ooh, this is gonna come down to the wire 
So Ice Golem reloaded. Why is he using the Ice Golem in this situation? Because Minion Horde is in hand. Uh, so making sure that you block with the Ice Golem, then you kind of have your Ice Spirit ready there as well. Uh, you can also mix in predictive fireballs. That time he kept on, kept the fireball in hand, used it on the mortar and on the tower. We set up with another defensive mortar. Here we go again. Now it's going to be a big Minion Horde push. We have the Ice Golem down. We have the offensive Hog Rider here. They respond with a bar barrel in the bats. We get one swing, the hog rider. Look at this defense, guys. Unbelievable. We had boy rascals. We had we had minion horde. We had uh, goblins left over. All coming down. Bats, I think, coming down the left lane there. Able to mitigate any damage. 824. All of a sudden, just like this, we are in the damage lead. Notice how that when Benzer goes aggressive, sometimes Lucas responds aggressive in the right lane. He just fireballs that minion horde there. 22 seconds remaining here, guys. This might be a draw. Here we go. We catch that miner again. Nice catch with the Ice Spirit. Here's one log. Here's another fireball. 360. One more log plus one more fireball will get that tower down, guys. Can he do it in eight seconds? Seven, six, five. There's a log. He gives the GG. Fireballs in hand. Wow, with two seconds left on the clock. What a way to start the video. Taking down one of the best in Asia. GG's Lucas. That was a great match to you guys to watch and study how to handle another popular deck. Let's go ahead and hop into the next one, guys. All right, guys. Here we are inside the next match against Helge Andre. Man, dude. The, uh, this is, this is gonna be a tough one. This is gonna be another tough one. Helge, I believe, is maybe top five ladder right now. I think last time I looked, he was first in the world. Uh, but here we go. We're going aggressive with the, uh, against a bandit and a mega minion. What is he playing right now with a NATO? I'm not sure. It could be that golem deck that's going around. Maybe the E-Drag golem deck, perhaps? I'm not sure. Usually he plays beatdown, but he's a really good player. He can play pretty much everything, but we actually do take that bandit charge. However, we are at the damage lead. Now, back to the whole magic number concept. What do I mean by that? Every deck that you're playing that relies on spell cycles oftentimes to finish out matches. We're talking about expo, we're talking about uh, bait, and we're talking about cycle decks like hog cycle, obviously. Uh, so you want to know what that number is, no matter what your card levels are. Obviously, everything is max for both players in these matchups, right? But max fireball is 292, right? A max log is 115. You add them together, magic, oh, 123, my bad. Uh, magic number is 707, and yes, I have that written down. <laughs> someone, last time I gave the magic number, someone in the comments was like, Ash, you had that written down! Yeah, I do, man. I don't play 2.6 hog, okay? <laughs> so anyway, the magic number is 707. That means that with only five cards played in this deck, you can do 707 damage, because you can cast a fireball, cycle, uh, skeletons, ice spirit, whatever, ice golem, cycle a log, and then you're back to fireball again. So with only five cards, you can get 707 damage uh, max. So here we go, it is a golem deck here. So just know those numbers, that way, I mean, you never wanna get caught having to push down on the card and figuring out how much damage it does. You should know if you have a, a tower down to a specific amount that, okay, I'm safe to play defense and I'm safe to, or I'm safe to focus on the other tower because I know I can take that tower down. So here we go, so far I kind of blabbed through the first uh, two minutes of this match, but so far doing good work, putting early pressure on the golem player. And when you go against a golem deck, when you're playing 2.6, that's exactly what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to put pressure in the first two minutes, a lot of offensive pressure. And then you're still gonna be applying a little bit of pressure if you haven't gotten a tower down in the first two minutes. But if you, if you do have a tower down and you have the advantage like we are right now with 30 seconds left, you can just focus on defense. That's why you wanna go aggressive. You need to do as much tower damage as possible against Golem during the first two minutes. So you start out aggressive and then you play a little bit more passive. And look at this defense here, guys. We do take a little hit, a couple hits from the Mega Minion in the right lane, but look at the defense in the left lane. He has Fireball already back in hand. We have a Raged Up Baby Dragon on the tower, but it doesn't matter. It's only gonna get the tower down to 885. Five seconds left, we have plenty of cards in hand right now to stop this bandit I think okay <laughs> we get the win there against Helde Andre hey against real two really good players back to back let's see if we can make it three in a row guys be right back all right guys here we are into match number three against Boof Mac oh my god could this get any more challenging three amazing players back to back to back dude Lucas has his work cut out for him here and this time it looks like maybe a royal giant deck Boof Max been on the channel before another amazing player, so we'll see how we do here, guys. Two impressive victories, and indeed, it is Royal Giant. So happy we have a Royal Giant 
a golem matchup and uh and a mortar matchup to start things out because they're three very popular decks right now inside the meta so here we go it's going to be a royal giant in the back here and uh we'll see what happens furnace almost taken care of we immediately fireballed that that furnace there don't even want to deal with all these fire spirits so let's see how we play defense here against a royal giant deck the most popular royal giant deck in the game probably i mean we can pretty much tell it is at this point so look at that separation again trying to avoid the possible lightning in boof max deck right so look at that we prevent any damage to the tower from that royal giant a nice log saving that log to the last second there now we freeze that uh that lumberjack Jack, excuse me with our ice spirit beautiful defense there it looks like we'll, we'll kind of watch for a pattern here as we go along in this match but it looks like what lucas is doing is playing his musketeer way in the back uh once he plays the royal giant in the back and then he plays the cannon way up near the the river to again uh mitigate lightning value uh from booth mac which is almost certainly his last card here so separation again gonna be really really paramount to having success inside this matchup so here we go again, just cycling an ice golem to block some of those fire spirits. We also uh, are just kind of just fireballing furnace every time he uses it. We have a nice uh, damage advantage here as we're about to cross over into double elixir time. So it's a musketeer going against that baby D. Lightning actually comes down this time. We log cycle meanwhile. Now we can go in with some skeletons. Probably has, okay, ice golem in hand here. So now we see the lightning from Boof Mac. What are we going to do here? We play a musketeer behind that ice golem knowing that he doesn't have lightning in hand. And and again a log comes down cycling to that ice spirit keeping that musketeer alive and immediately the fireball goes down again on that furnace here we go force an e-wiz at the bridge out of boof max hand there and the hog's gonna get that final swing against that furnace here we go 30 seconds left in regulation things are definitely gonna be going into sudden death overtime again here guys so it's an ice golem and a musketeer again let's see if we see another high cannon or what he does starts out with a log he's gonna be able to cycle back to another log look at him using his spells here again knowing that lightning is in hand he bought so much time for that musketeer that she was actually able to just kill that royal giant before again he even got one hit one shot off on our tower so this time the the e -Wiz, excuse me stays alive there uh not allowing that hog to finish off that furnace but again it looks like we're gonna take no we're not gonna take even one ice spear uh excuse me fire spirit from that furnace Luke is very happy to trade that one elixir to mitigate that damage. And again, here is an ice golem and a, musk and a musketeer. And again, textbook, a log, let's see, fireball, log, fireball, cycle cards. And again, no hits from the royal giant. And you see how he's avoiding giving any lightning valley. He's only used one uh, cannon so far this entire match, if I'm not mistaken. So again, 30 seconds now into sudden death overtime. And look at this, log cycling here fireball cycling here we've got the tower down to 1547 we have defense pretty much taken care of and he's still using his hog it's not like it's a strict uh spell cycle here but forcing another furnace out of his hand here trying to keep that musketeer alive we don't this time but still we uh the elixir are rather even right now at this point a nice high uh furnace there so he's ready to try to snipe with the musketeer but a fast fireball is going to take care of that e -whiz and do more damage to that furnace and again we're just going to keep logging log cycle down here lumberjack down for booth back we're going to get a swing no we're not oh that furnace in the nick of time again there for him and now hey time is kind of ticking here we need to do something but you saw from that first match that we can spell cycle very very quickly using this deck so here it goes mega minion in the back another fireball that's nice fireball value taking out the furnace hitting the tower and uh, hitting the mega minion there another log goes down there by lucas all of a sudden you're feeling the momentum change at this point or not change i think it's always been in lucas's uh side of the arena but you're starting to feel the okay spell cycle range here we're not giving up any value at all to the lightning there's two musketeers a nice ice spirit skeletons to buy a little bit more time and fireball back again in hand this time baby d gets on the tower raged up taking it down to 2191 but look at that 763 you know what that means two logs two fireballs and it's gg that's log number one 53 seconds remaining here 640 left on the tower here it goes i tell you what guys this is absolutely textbook amazing 2.6 cycle gameplay you guys can easily copy this you can see the pattern 
that Lucas is using here, guys, to be able to win this matchup. A lot of people don't know. He makes it look easy. A lot of people don't know what you should be doing against a Royal Giant deck when your best defense is usually cannon, right? But he's making it look pretty easy here. And there it is, the final fireball. And that's GG. Another victory for Lucas. Three in a row here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and hop into match number four. And here we go into match number four against Deep Joker. So I believe this is Mugi. Oh my word. A uh, top Japanese pro who is on the channel who recently had uh, both first and second place in the world using uh, Balloon and using... Uh, Ooh, it was, okay, Mortar? Was that the deck? I, I covered the deck, and I can't even remember what, what the heck it was. Oh, it's embarrassing. Anyway, here we go. It's going to be another Mortar deck, it looks like here, guys. But look at the cycle cards. Look at look at his deck so far. This might be like old school Rocket. No, Hog. So a throwback to maybe a little bit Macarius here, a newer version of the Macarius deck. By the way, he's coming on the channel very, very soon as well. Excuse me. And again, able to avoid all damage there. So check it out. Mortar Hog. Both the cycle cards, Knight and Snowball, a very, very fast Hog Mortar cycle deck. Musketeer as well, so it's almost like, I, I want to say probably like a 2.8, 2.9 cost or so. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how we negotiate this matchup against another fast cycle deck with two win conditions. So uh, the Musketeer here remaining probably be answered with Skeletons or something. Skeletons are down there uh, for Joker. And uh, yeah, we're approaching about the halfway mark here in this matchup. I can't believe he beat three, uh, you know, top-notch players in a row to start this video out. As a content creator, kind of get excited about it, you know? So a nice cannon there is going to both distract that mortar and take care of the hog. So two win conditions down uh, in one sequence there. A, a good start here for Lucas as we have 20, min 20 seconds, excuse me, 20 minutes. Oh my god, that would be a long match. 20 seconds here uh, remaining in single elixir time. So Musketeer reloaded in the back. Skeletons to kite a little bit. And let's see if he goes in with a hog here again. Another one of those kind of odd matchups where it's difficult to get through his defenses as well. Jokers, right? So we go opposite lane with a hog there, kind of juked out with the ice golem. That's something you guys can do when you're playing a uh, hog cycle as well. Fireball comes down as well there. Snowball in response, but we are going to get one hog hit on that left tower. 29.92, 10, 15 seconds here into uh, double elixir time. So another log cycle there by Lucas, 28.69. And now we have the cannon there on defense. We immediately send in another hog. Notice how he, do how he does that sometimes guys how he does that guys you notice how he does that uh sometimes when the opponent goes uh, rather aggressive before they can mount like a huge push lucas will send in the hog rider pretty early on even before he defends in some situations as his first kind of response to the opponent that's going to mitigate uh them being allowed to do what they want to do. Lucas is kind of setting the tempo here in these matches, even despite his opponent having two win conditions. So here it goes. Oh, he misses with that hog there. I don't know if that was intentional. Either way, he logs back there, but he does take some damage. Meanwhile, on the other tower, he's able to do, I don't know if he got another hog hit. I kind of missed it, but 27-46, so a slight damage advantage here so far for Lucas, despite that missed pull on that cannon. And now this cannon is going to go ahead and strike, but this is going to be difficult here, guys. We freeze that hog, and he does get one hit, though, again, despite that musketeer. So a defensive mortar set up here by Mugi. Let's see what we do. We have skeletons to track that mortar, keeping that musketeer at full health, and then a, a fireball comes down chipping away again at the tower that we're focused on here here comes the hog rider again for Mugi. we have the defensive uh cannon set up here we have ice spirit back in hand we actually use log this time but 1770 hp remaining on our right tower guys Ooh, this is going to be another tough one 40 seconds in here musketeer again just fireball cycling try to trying not to fall too far behind in the damage game but things aren't looking that swell. Here we go. This time a high uh, cannon there. Nice cannon placement. Again, switching things up here. We used the low cannon two times in a row. This time being ready for that predictive fireball. We went that with the high cannon, but we went with the hog first. 2039 remaining on the left tower there of Mugi. Here we go. It's a musketeer, a hog rider. A big push coming in the right for Mugi. We have the defensive cannon again. We went offensive pretty aggressively too with the hog and the ice golem. Hey, look at that hog on the tower, guys. Meanwhile, in defense, we're able to mitigate all damage. 886 seven remaining on the left tower what a beautiful play there we went so aggressive there in that left lane and again a log cycled there this time a high cannon cart see the delay there a, a cannon cart what what card is that high cannon 
You guys notice the delay on that cannon there by Lucas, and again, he's happy to spell cycle at this point. Here it goes, a fireball and a log, three elixir in hand. He has that mortar distracted with an ice golem. The defensive cannon is down. Here it goes, hog on hog, no mortar in cycle. So you see that fast cycle that Lucas was able to do there at the very end of the game to pick up the victory? Basically knowing that he used the, Amugi used the offensive mortar, so that freed him up to cycle to a hog rider really quickly and finish the game. That's four in a row, guys. Let's go into the next one. All right, guys, here we go against Beast from Elite Kings. Same clan starts out with a musketeer in the back. Again, a lot of you giving me feedback that uh, some of you guys have noticed that basically I've been keeping my videos around 20 minutes lately, but a lot of you guys miss those 30 minute videos. I don't know how long this will be once I edit out all the downtime. In real time, it's going to be like over two hours <laughs> because of how long it takes for him to find his matches. But I'm not sure how long this will be, but I'll make sure I include uh, you know, as many matches as possible, basically, uh, given the time that Lucas has available. Uh, on voice interview videos, which I just... I'm still going to try to do like 50-50 on voice and off voice here on the channel. But on the voice interview uh, videos, those are easy to go long, like a half an hour or more. Uh, but when there's no pro on voice and I'm just doing play-by-play, -play, I generally like to keep it in like the 20 to 30 minute range or, you know, maybe even like 18 to 28 minute range. I think that's, you know, just based on my viewer retention, that's kind of when people start tuning out usually around like 16, 18 minutes. I know my hardcore, my, 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 my best subscribers and viewers watch till the very end and I certainly appreciate it. But I think sometimes watching a deck for a half an hour, 45 minutes when it's just me as the host, I think sometimes you kind of pick up on what you need to pick up on uh, after about 20 minutes. But maybe I could be wrong there, just again, based on the analytics. Uh, a nice fireball there, pushing that miner into the skeletons. Here we go with the hog rider in the left lane. He gets one swing on that tower and uh, runs right into that prince. So it's a minor control deck. Uh, man, prince minor control is so powerful right now. There's no doubt about it that minor control is certainly back. I see, you know, B-Rad still streams minor control on a pretty frequent basis. A lot of pro players have picked it up and had a lot of success with it. So it's cool to see the control archetype kind of viable in the game again. I remember playing minor control right when the minor first came out in the game. When was that? Back in like 2016, maybe 2017. You guys can check the date, but that ice spirit doesn't hop. It does not hop the uh, the, the river there, and uh, but it doesn't matter. The, the, the right tower, excuse me, is going to finish off that musketeer. So another defensive can and uh, then again placed low to obviously not run into the range of that or the radius of the uh, the aggro on that inferno tower so here we go again with the hog rider trying to bypass that inferno tower but he has another one in cycle beast already gave the gg to lucas here we go ahead and we just fireball and sometimes when your opponent you know how you ever run into opponent an, an opponent when they just kind of pre-place a tesla or a fireball when you haven't even played the hog yet not that it happened in that situation that was kind of an already surviving inferno tower but in those situations you can either go in with a hog and try to outcycle their defensive unit uh, before they get back to it you'll be back to your hog or you can just fireball their tower and uh, and just kind of wait and play defense so you kind of have the choice there meanwhile with that log 10 seconds into sudden death overtime we get that left tower down to 1102 hp guys and here we go with the defensive cannon again it's a prince a musketeer and a cannon and a barbarian from that bar barrel but nice defense again look, look at that that uh, musketeer way in the back trying to avoid giving any immediate ooh we do take some hits from that uh that offensive musketeer though but again good spacing there with the musketeer avoiding giving any immediate poison value on that offensive push so again 810 remaining a defensive cannon in the back there uh kind of trying to stop trying to avoid giving too much of a radius potential for that miner here we go with the musketeer on defense he's going all in is the beast goes with the miner and the poison we have skeletons on that uh prince Meanwhile, our hog rider who we sent in, we kind of snuck him in there, takes the tower down. Lucas can't lose. Time for a clickbait title. <laughs> Let's go into the next match, guys. Let's do one more. All right, guys. Nah, but he really can't lose this guy. I mean, this is pretty incredible here. You know, even the best players in the world, obviously, a lot of these guys are losing you know, uh, at least 40% of their matches, you know? It's not like just because you're a great player, just because you have a great deck, all these guys in this trophy range are great players, you know? So it's it's typical normally on these, on these videos, how I normally do it just to kind of, I have nothing to really hide here, but how I normally do these live ladder videos is I'll hit record 
and I start them with a win, you know? So if he loses like three in a row, I'm not gonna upload the video, you know? But if you start with a win and then we just roll from there, that's kind of how I do the format here. Just kind of, again, a look behind the scenes. So this is another, Mir is another really, really good Golem beatdown player. And here we go against the Golem. So let's see, we end up going same lane only because we already did a lot of damage to that tower. Normally, if they, all things being equal, we would probably hit opposite lane of the Golem after he drops it. But let's watch this defensive sequence here, guys. Again, pulling that uh, Lumberjack over temporarily with the Ice Spirit and then again with those Skeletons. This time, we're not able to protect that Musketeer. Nah, Musketeer goes down to the Tornado. But look at this Lumberjack. He is absolutely going everywhere in the arena other than the Tower. Tower able to finish him off really clean defense there again and see how you know defensively speaking not only the spacing but the timing of his cycle cards definitely something that you guys are going to want to note there right so he used his ice spirit he waited a second he used his skeletons he waited a couple seconds obviously that's a that's going to be important in any matchup because you want to avoid whatever spells they have right they could throw down a snowball throw down a zap throw down a poison or whatever so when you start getting too crazy with your cycle cards i notice this a lot of players a lot of 2.6 players who aren't very experienced they tend to like overuse their cycle cards or use them too aggressively uh you know too close to one another you play one you wait wait for it to do its job and then you play another one. Meanwhile, the hog goes in again, same lane, as soon as that uh, that golem was down. Now 45, 50 seconds or so remaining in this match. Again, nice separation there. We don't know if he has lightning, if he has poison. We don't know what his big spell is, but we have a big spell, it's fireball. Don't be afraid to use fireball on defense against these golem matchups. You saw on the first golem matchup against Helge. Let, make sure you guys go ahead and do the same. Use that fireball defensively, guys, against Golem. Sometimes that's what you need to kill those really big pushes. And now with 25 seconds left, guys, it looks like this is going to be a relatively easy victory. As a 2.6 player, you should be beating pretty much every Golem deck, you know, unless they're make unless you make big mistakes, you have the matchup advantage. And there it goes with the lightning down in the pocket there from Emir. And hey, it's going to be a relative. He made it look really easy, right? And again, avoiding lightning value and just uh, a beautiful match there. That's textbook how you how you want to handle a golem matchup. And there's the fireball at the end of the day. <laughs> Lucas not too amused with that matchup. So guys, that is going to do it for this episode. Let's see where he is right now. Uh, on ladder he's seventh in the world at 71 62 so way to go lucas man i hope you guys enjoyed this uh video i don't want to push my luck at this point this guy's a beast and really this is one of the best videos to watch on my channel when it comes to 2.6 so free feel free to bookmark it i know that's self-serving but still we covered a variety of popular matchups that i don't really see going anywhere in terms of the archetypes we faced so a big shout out to lucas again check out his uh player stats and profile thanks to statsrail.com Follow him on Twitter. I'll have his Twitter uh, info also linked in the show notes below. And of course, a huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out Bren's information in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, take care, guys.